When we're feeling tired or lethargic, sometimes all we need is some good food and some fresh air. A little outdoor picnic not only lifts our spirits, it also literally energizes us, as well as ourselves. For a few lessons, we've done some dancing around cellular respiration, which is the process that converts food into chemical energy. All of our cells are constantly performing cellular respiration for us, and we can remind it of this every time we sit down for a picnic and breathe in the open air. <sighs> this air is chock full of oxygen. In this lesson and future lessons on cellular respiration, we'll walk through the steps that our cells take to use components in the food we consume and the air we breathe. But first, let's take a step back for a reminder on the components of cellular respiration. The fancy chemical formula for cellular respiration is C6H12O6 plus 6O2 plus 32ADP yields 6H2O plus 6CO2 plus 32ATP. C6H12O6, otherwise known as glucose, comes straight from the blueberry pie or whatever else is on your picnic plate. It represents the organic compounds that are derived from our food. O2, or oxygen, of course, is in the air that we breathe. You'll also remember that cellular respiration yields water and carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is removed from our bodies with every exhale. <sighs> now, let's take a second to review the final reactant in this equation, ADP, or adenosine diphosphate. An ADP molecule has two phosphate groups. You recall that this ADP is like an uncharged battery. The big goal of cellular respiration is to charge ADP to its fully energized form, otherwise known as the product ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. ATP is simply an ADP molecule with a third phosphate molecule. Take a good look at this chemical structure because this is what cellular respiration is all about. ATP is the chemical energy that cellular respiration strives to make. It's essentially the chemical currency of life used to pay for all the reactions that cost energy in the cell. It's the energy that we get from our little picnic outdoors. And the last player in this chemical process we should remind ourselves of is not included in this equation. In our cells, we also have nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD+, which is a coenzyme. NAD plus collects electrons and carries them to another location. When NAD plus picks up an electron, it becomes reduced and is now represented as NADH. Now, creating ATP through cellular respiration is a long process. It occurs in three stages, glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain. In this lesson, we'll focus on what happens during glycolysis and how this feeds into the other stages. Glycolysis is the first stage in cellular respiration and happens in the cytoplasm. So to combine our players with the process, glycolysis is the first stage of cellular respiration and uses the following molecules, glucose, NAD+, ATP, and ADP. Glucose is a six carbon sugar. We can represent glucose as a six carbon sugar by using six blue circles, one blue circle for each carbon. In glycolysis, Glucose is broken down using 10 enzymatic reactions to produce two 3-carbon molecules of pyruvate. Essentially, glucose is split in half and rearranged a bit. In this process, we come away with some valuable products. Instead of going through the nitty-gritty of all the enzymes and chemical reactions involved, let's focus on some of the steps and how they get us to the next stage of cellular respiration. Importantly, you need to know that we use two ATP molecules to perform glycolysis. It may sound sort of funny that we need to spend chemical energy in, to make chemical energy, but think of it like investment of money that grows over time. You need to spend some chemical money to make some. Glucose is transported into the cytoplasm of our cells. Here, it's rearranged and receives two phosphate groups from two different molecules of ATP, which then become ADP. Here, the addition of phosphate groups is represented by these two red circles. This is the energy investment. This new six carbon molecule is then divided into two three carbon sugars, each containing a phosphate group. These two molecules are identical, and what happens next happens to both molecules. One enzyme brings one NAD plus electron carrier and one phosphate group 
to each three carbon molecule. Each electron carrier picks up electrons, becoming reduced as NADH. The phosphate group is added to the molecule. In subsequent steps, two ADP molecules per three carbon molecule come by to pick up all the phosphate groups. This creates four ATP molecules total, or four units of chemical energy, and leaves us with two molecules of three carbon pyruvate. Now let's tally what happens during glycolysis, the first stage in cellular respiration. One glucose molecule is broken down into two molecules of pyruvate in the cytoplasm. In the process of creating two pyruvates, two molecules of ATP are used, but four are created. Therefore, our net chemical energy from glycolysis is two molecules of ATP. Two NAD plus electron carriers collected electrons, producing two NADH plus proton molecules. The pyruvate will move on to the next part of this process, which is the citric acid cycle. The ATP, of course, is usable energy for the cell. The NADH plus proton molecules will be used later in cellular respiration during the electron transport chain to help our cells make even more ATP. At this point, we've taken the first step to using the food from our picnic and turning it into chemical energy. In the next two stages of this process, we'll see how we can use oxygen and electron carriers to create even more ATP to energize our cells.